Hello, good day and welcome back to Learn and Flutter. So in the last example, um, we started writing a simple application, which we say was going to be a xylophone. And so that was going to look something like this. Well, mine has run with rounded borders now on the keys, but I'll show you exactly how to do this. Very, very simple. And that's just make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, we can do things, of course, like tilting the keys and they don't have to be, you know, rectangular. We can sort of taper them and so on. So skew them and so on in different um, dimension, right? But we're not going to do that. We're simply going to run the keys and we're going to see if we can get um, our application to play audio. So that is the goal for this video. So let's jump in. So before I get started with how to play audio, um, I want to show you how I rounded the uh, um, corners of my keys. So I use a border decoration and so I should probably mute my phone first. Okay, take care of that. We'll continue with part six directory. I'm not going to create a new um, project like you're seeing me doing before and then copy the file. That's sort of getting kind of wasteful. Um, but we'll continue with this. I'll do my Visual Studio Code here. I already have my um, simulator up and running. I already put it in landscape mode. And just remember, you can go here and say rotate to the left, for example, or to the right, depending on what you how you want to see it. And then if we go to our application, this is exactly where we left off the last time. And so let me make this a little bit smaller. I wish there was something that says stay on top or something like that. And so regardless of what I'm doing back here, it could probably stay on top. But then again, maybe I might find that annoying, but who knows. All right, so anyway, so we have our app here. And so um, we can run it. So let me restart to debug. Uh, right now, I want to go here and say start debugging. And so just make sure though, you see that the application we're going to start with doesn't have a rounded border. Now, while that's doing that, I can go to the documentation. And so let's say we wanted to do rounded borders. Now I'm going to give it away and say that's how uh, you can use a container to do a rounded border. Of course, there's a container that we have been using to draw our keys. And so back on the flood documentation website, you can go to docs, then go to widget catalog. And then instead of basis, basic widgets, right? Or the basic widgets and we will see that we have column, which we've been using container. And so let's click on container. If we scroll along a little bit further and so on, we can um, see that oh, there's this decoration property. And so we can click on that to see more about decoration. And so it says the decoration to paint behind the child and a shorthand for specifying just a solid color is available in the constructor. Set the color argument instead of the decoration argument. So what we've been doing, if we go back here and we look at our container, we've been setting on our container a color. Well, that is just a shorthand. See, the color argument is a shorthand for decoration new color. So we can easily replace this with a decoration and then box decoration. And then because this is a short and for a box decoration with a color, we can just simply set the color on our box decoration and we should still have the exact same thing. And oh man, trying to move this around. And so if I refresh, you'll see our app still works and nothing has changed because just putting a color is the same thing as setting a using box with a decoration. Now you cannot use both of these at the same time because color is simply a shorthand for that, which means you cannot supply both a color and a de decoration argument. So if we're using a box decoration, look at some of the things that we have color, which we specify. We have an image. We don't want to use an image right now. We could specify border and we can specify border radius, geometry, and a whole bunch of other things. So one of the things is um, the border radius. We don't want drop shadow, box shadow, or gradient, but 
being able to do the border radius will allow us to have those rounded edge. So, and then border radius expects a border radius geometry. Now, I know that our border radius geometry is all, it's a base class and of which they have two implementation. And so you can say box radius, let's see, border radius rather, border radius, and go here. And for example, you can specify circular. I advise you to play with these as usual, but this is going to create a border radius where all radii are the same. And so let's just try 8.0, for example. We go back here, we wait for this to update, and there you can see my radius just updated. You can try 16, see if you like 16, seem to make sense to you. Um, so this looks okay, but I think I like the eight a little bit, and maybe I'll just leave it at 16. Okay, so now that we know how to make rounded keys, so that's easy. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do was to look, our app, look at our app again and see that when we start our app, it's a stateless app widget, of course. We have a container that's white, makes sense. This represents this whole big area. And then we have a center widget, and then we have this layout um, builder. The layout builder gives us the opportunity to determine the width of our parent or the width that we have to use and then calculate how wide each of our keys are going to be. So that was great. Question is, do we really need the center widget? Because if we can use less widgets and do get the same result, why not? Less work for our application to do. So one way we can do this is by clicking on the center widget and then clicking on this little yellow bulb and then say, remove this widget. And so what this is going to do is make the layout builder a child of our container instead of a, instead of a center widget. And if we look, we can see that our, um, the result is exactly the same. So we get the same result and we have one less widget to paint or compute or anything like that. So that's good. All right. So that allow us to get sort of closer to what we want. Now we can still click these. We don't see any feedback or anything, but that's a much later. We're going to make it so that we see a ripple or something, get some kind of feedback, but at least we want to hear music. That's the whole point of this. So for now, I'll say, let's put this aside. So I'll do like this and let me just minimize it actually. Now that we have that ready and we want to talk about how do we play audio in Flutter application. So I went online and just simply click playing audio in Flutter application and then look at some of the links that I would get back. And I usually like going to Stack Overflow. Um, people um, tend to review the answers there and you could get a pretty good idea if people agree with, you know, answers that are checked as, you know, checked off or something like that. And so this is one way of doing it. So this is kind of small, Let's zoom in. And so this is how so you can use this audio player plugin. Now, one of the things is that to note is that Flutter does not at this time ship with built-in support. This was back in 2017 and I think it's still the case today. If you find something, let me know. And so this is one way of doing this. And it seems pretty straightforward, right? Um, you would have a function that you can call um, that basically um, get uses this audio player and say, I want you to play this thing that's a URL. Or if you're playing something local, I think this example is messed up because it says just add is local parameter to play a local file but this is exactly as the previous one. So there's a copy and paste, you can pause and so on. And so I was about to try this. When I scroll down a little bit more, I saw this one that says, hey, it's even easier. You can just simply use this audio cache at Dart and it plays local MP3 files. And so those MP3 files, if you add them to your application as assets, because we don't want to play audio files that are stored on some server anyway, it's gonna be bundled with our application. So as we move the application around, we have all the audio files. So I think this is the approach that I will try. Again, I'll try and see if this works. Well, before I can get some audio files, I need, um, before I can try to play audio files, I need to get some. So one option is to look for xylophone song sample. 
but um, if you're following my other videos, you know that how recently my computer was sort of hacked because I installed I installed a piece of software, Adobe um, Reader package that I thought was um, trusted, and it was not. It was compromised, and so as a result, my computer was hacked, and so I have all this um, security stuff running on my application, virus thing, and all this other stuff, and one result of that is my computer is really slow. The other result of that is um, that now I'm not going to be as installing anything willy nilly. So I do not want to go look for some free xylophone song sample and download yet something else that might be compromised. So instead, I decided to just use my phone, record some audio, and walk around my house and just, well, actually, not my house, just my office right here, and just hit stuff with different types of material and then record the song and so that's all i need so i need about what we have seven um keys so i just need seven song samples now i actually think that oh while i'm doing this primarily because um i don't want to download something else i think it's actually fun if you're doing this for like a kid like i was doing something like this for my son um then they can participate in trying to create those song samples that they want to hear when they hit a key I remember for each key the song samples doesn't need to be so um, too long i think maybe a second or something we'll see will make sense so anyway so that's the some sam song samples i have so now i tell you how i got my song i recorded with my phone by making making some songs around the, uh, my office here and then I'm using Audacity to edit that song file into individual MP3 files. Um, if you want to go the same route I did, then download Audacity. The only other thing that I would encourage you to do is once you download Audacity, well, what you would want to do is add the FFM, um, uh, FMPEG plugin um, so that our Audacity can export files in a wider variety of formats. And the way you do that is by, once you start up Audacity, so let me just start it here. Da, da, da. Here it is. You start up Audacity. Your screen might look a little different than mine because I move my menus around. But um, here is your different mic input. Um, here is your output. So for example, if I wanted to record from my microphone, uh, built-in microphone, I can say select that and then click this record button. Um, that's a way to go. And of course, we want to play back. You can choose the thing you want to play back to. But what I was talking about, about being able to export in many other formats is by going to preferences, or you get there, go to libraries, and then you can see I'm using FMPEG library. Um, you can click on locate if you already have it installed, or you can click on download. It's gonna take you to the download page, and it's gonna tell you exactly how to, that, 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 that. It's gonna say, if you're doing for Windows or Linux, this is what you need to do. And you just go and you follow the documentation. And if you go over to the download page, the only thing you have to be careful about is that uh, that's too big. Um, here is lame, and this is FMPEG. Now we can go back to our application and see how to um, to use it. So we can click on this and to get more about audio cache if we wanted to. Um, but it says all you need to do to play an audio is to just import this. Um, I believe we have to also have a plugin. So I'm surprised that they're not showing you that all we need dependency, but let's follow exactly like they say. Let's do this. Copy that. Paste that. And my guess is that we need to install this audio player plugin. And the way you do install plugin for Dart application is you go to your popspec.yaml file, you scroll down, and as you can see, there are already some dependencies here. There's one, for example, for Flutter and so and Cupertino. And so we just go add the dependency for audio cache. Um, so audio players, let's see, we scroll up. Uh, yep, there we go. Dependency, you put this in. So copy this, go back to our Flutter application, and just below here, we can say playing audio or whatever note you want to make. If you want to make a note, I paste that. 
And then once my file save, it updated and pulled down that plugin, right? Okay, tell me that a new version of Flutter is available. I'm going to ignore that for now. And so, yep, it looked like um, we got the updated plugin. If I go back to my Dart main here, um, yep, it's just saying that it's unused. But other than that, I don't have a problem. Now, if we go down here, oh, what's the other thing we have to do? We have to, let's go back. We have to add our, our samples as um, assets under the assets directory. So let's go do that. And so I put my assets in place. And so those sample song that I have, I create a directory here um, alongside my pub spec file and I call it assets. And then I create a directory for song because later on I might want to also include some images. So I just want to keep them separate. And these are the song files. Now this is way more than I need for our application, but those are all the samples that I managed to extract. A number of them sort of sung alike. They're not as varied as I would have liked, but I created them and they're royalty free. So free, free to use them. I'll include them in the project. But anyway, I have them in this directory. So the one thing that we need to do now is go back to our um, pop spec file here and declare our assets. Now, how do I know that oh, this is what I need to do? Well, if you go to the documentation about, um, let's close this off. We're not talking about that stuff anymore. And it says that don't forget to the file structure would be something like this. Um, current directory. Well, I'll just show a current directory, but you could put it anywhere, essentially asset and then explosion. And then in your pub spec, you have to define, declare under the asset that you have asked. So this is the directory name that you decide to use. So any name you decide to use doesn't matter because this already says an asset and this is the path to that thing. So you're free to use any name. Now, how do you, how can I be sure of that? Well, just go um, and search for Flutter assets. And this very first link that came up here for me, if I start reading this, it tells you about what assets are, um, the different things, configuration file, images and song that you can stay with your application. It tells you to clear, declare them in your pub spec, you know, on the Flutter assets. Now this is required um, to be exactly like this, but in terms of the path, you can use anything. Um, it mentions that here, it says the actual directory use, which is asset in this case, does not matter. Each asset is identified by an explicit path relative to pub spec. So in my case, pub spec and my asset directory are parallel, right? They're siblings. So it's okay for me to just say assets forward slash songs forward slash sample one, two, three, whatever. If I put my assets in a different directory, like lib, for example, then it would be, you know, in pub spec, I would have to do lib, blah, 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 blah. Um, so here you see a directory for images, and this is how it's specified. So instead I will do so assets. Um, so I'll comment out this and then I'll do dash and I want assets because that's what I call my directory and then songs. And if I do songs forward slash, it means that I'll, all the files in this subdirectory, instead of me having to name them, um, call each one of them out like in this example, because I have sample one through like 21 or something like that. Okay, so now that I have followed the requirement, I have um, the direction, I've done this, I've added the pub spec, um, I have added declared my assets. And so the only thing left is for me to declare a player, which I should be able to do by going here up to the top and then saying something like we can do final probably and there we go um, and then what else do we do oh we simply say play um, player that play and we give it the name of a file which is in this case um, in our asset directory okay so if we were to follow that then when we click here then we should put this here and then say player that play. And we don't have exam um, explosion, but we have sample one. So let's do sample sample one. 
but this is supposed to be the name the way it's defined in the asset folder so i think for us it's going to be song slash sample one oh this taking a long time decide to stop it because it was saying syncing files the iphone simulator for the longest time for well over a minute or something so i just decided to stop it and just do rebuild because to rebuild at least you know it's taking long at least we know it completes that syncing thing i really don't know how long that was going to take it's already going for too long and i thought that though all i did was change that one line so it should have been pretty fast um but we'll see and then i checked the size of the assets um, even though I have 16 files, they're only 116K. So um, it's not that um, big a file set to upload. Um, so I don't know why it was taking so long. Okay, so it looks like we have our application. So let's try this again. I don't hear anything, but let me turn up the volume. Oh, it works. Okay, maybe not. Let's see. Yep, it does. Yep, it works. Okay, so that absolutely totally works. Um, as you can see, it takes it takes a long time for me to change the code and play something else. But I would say that uh, one of the things we can do is pass another parameter to our xylophone key here called final song. I think it's gonna be okay. It might figure it out. Okay, so that's fine. Um, usually you, when you have weird name, you use it, but okay. So, um, so then that's going to be that way. And then let's see, uh, we want to map over and create, um, our songs here so we can do, um, uh, you know, sample and then ideally we want to give it, um, Let's do, we're doing from one to seven, for example. Um, we might have a variable. Um, I'm start from five, sample five. And so I'll do that plus I as the song. And, oh, actually, um, this can be done very easily with this again something like this sample i remember when we pass in the sample we just say sample one or two it gets constructed to the actual asset within here so i just need to pass that in um um see provisional argument must occur before a name oh uh, yeah we basically need to say song yep like that and then with that in place, the only thing now left is for us to update our map. Now, um, we were doing um, I, so we can do probably I++ here um, to, let me see if that would actually work in here. So, yep, that might work. Um, otherwise, so that we can make an actual, um, like, Enclose this as a function like this, and then do something like this. Oh man, um, something like that. And cheese, um, something like that. And then where we increment i or something first, it's sort of um, up to us what we decide to do. And then we use i. And then we will return this guy. So that's another way of doing it. Um, here we actually don't need to enclose it because we're not doing an expression. But the other way would have worked too. So anyway, so now we have this. And now if we stop this because it's taking so long, rebuild it. Now again, I'm starting from I, from the fifth sample, because so I'm actually using sample six, seven, and eight, whatever. Um, because um, if I made if I want to use some sample one, I just make this zero because I'm doing the increment first. I increment I first, then I use it, right? So that would give me from one to seven. But because I know I have 21 samples, I can start from five, from six. Okay, so this didn't look like it's finished compiling yet. All right, and once you do that, then it should work once you stop upload. Um, but for me, I'm gonna cut the video here. Um, so. 
take care see you in the next video let me know your opinion if you tried something else if something didn't work for you in the next video i'll show you my end results with the different songs that i have take care bye